Pakistan's commanding general in Afghanistan, Stanley McChrystal, has been yanked off the battlefield and ordered to report to the White House. Now, the anointed one is furious about a forthcoming Rolling Stone piece in which General McChrystal criticizes members of the administration. Now, Democrats, from the anointed one to Vice President Joe Biden to Ambassador Richard Holbrook, are harshly rebuked. In the interview, the president's first meeting with the general is described as a photo op and the president himself as detached and unprepared. Now, according to the piece, one McChrystal aide characterized National Security Advisor Jim Jones as a, quote, clown who was stuck in 1985. McChrystal is also depicted as receiving an email from Ambassador Richard Holbrook and then groaning, quote, I don't even want to open it. Now, the article also reveals that McChrystal aides have nicknamed Joe Biden Vice President Bite Me, thanks to his opposition to the war in Afghanistan. Now, given how well the anointed one takes criticism, let's just say the White House is not taking this lightly. Propaganda Minister Robert Gibbs declined to say whether McChrystal would keep his job. Let's take a look. The president uh, uh, will speak with General McChrystal uh, about his comments, and uh, we'll have more to say um, after that meeting. Is McChrystal's job safe? Uh, we'll have more to say after that meeting. All right, General uh, McChrystal immediately apologized for his remarks and those of his aides, saying, quote, it was a mistake reflecting poor judgment and should never have happened. I have enormous respect and admiration for President Obama and his national security team and for the civilian leaders and troops fighting this war. Meanwhile, the country remains at war, so will the president set his ego aside, accept the general's apology, and let him head back onto the battlefield. Joining me now with reaction is the host of War Stories, Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North, and former Secretary of the Navy, Veterans Affairs, Jim Nicholson. Guys, welcome to the program. Thank you, Sean. Good evening, Sean. Oh, thank you, Ollie. It's good to see you. Uh, your, rea Again. your reaction to all this? Well, there's no way that there's Barack Obama, who's been accused, and I think rightly so, of being indecisive, ambivalent, unable to make up his mind, detached. All of those things about everything from the economy to the war to the Gulf oil spill, there's no way he can pass up this opportunity to look decisive and fire General McChrystal. So you, you predict he's going to be fired. Now look, I would argue that it's probably unwise, probably what he said was wrong. Um, I, I think probably, if, Ali, if any big mistake was made here, it was that he allowed this magazine around him for, for weeks on end, apparently. Apparently so. And, and by the way, most of what his staff and he say about the O team, I would agree with. The, the problem, of course, is the one of judgment, of allowing somebody from Rolling Stone to hang around, as it were, with the internal workings of the staff and with the general, defies any kind of understanding. It's either arrogance or ignorance, or they thought they could win him over somehow by being tough guys. It yeah. backfired, it's going to blow up, and I believe it's going to cost the general his job. You know, I, I think you're probably right. Uh, Ambassador, you agree with the same? No, I, I'm not sure it will. I, I think it might be more courageous uh, for Obama to keep him uh, because the war is so important. I mean, he never said anything uh, insubordinate or disrespectful uh, to Obama or to the policies of Obama. And he is the leading counterinsurgency leader that we have in our arsenal in America today. And that's a classic, intense counterinsurgency. So. You know, he used very bad judgment. He, he, it probably rises to the level of, uh, you know, he probably either tender his resignation or Obama might be justified in, in firing. I, I, you know, Barack Obama, some say, couldn't have gotten a commission, couldn't have gotten a security clearance. But he did get elected commander-in-chief, and Jim, we have to respect that. That is no, our I, system, I, and he is the boss. So I agree, and that's what why... He, what he says goes. I, 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 and I think it was probably unwise. But I also think there's some texture and context to all of this as well. Uh, and I'm not making excuses for the general here, but this is the same general that we risk failure, Ali, if he didn't get the, amount, the troop strength that he needed. Obama dithered, waited months, and did not grant his request. Exactly. The article and, said and that, that's part of the problem. Well, this is part of the problem. Then there's been this ongoing, you know, public relations battle between McChrystal, the Pentagon, and the administration, as as evidenced by Jonathan Alter's book. So the question is here: Is this just frustration by a former Obama supporter? No, no, I think he is very obviously frustrated. And it says in the article, and no reason to disbelieve it, he actually voted for Obama. The, the problem is, is 
the secretary just pointed out. This man has, has exercised very, very poor judgment. And his staff, quite frankly, whether it was at the Pentagon or Central Command or right there in the staff that approved this embed. And I know what it's like to go through getting an embed at press. You know, 20 some odd times I've had to go over there, file all the paperwork. You have to lay out exactly what you're going to do. So somebody in between the Pentagon and right out there in Kabul needs to know they really screwed up. Somebody had it in for the general. They let this, all, this whole thing happen. Very, very yeah. intemperate remarks. Not quite to the level of Article 88 of the Uniform Code of Military Justice that says commissioned officers can be court-martialed for being disrespectful. I don't, I don't think that's going to happen, see, but I can't see how possibly General McChrystal survives this. See, I, I don't think so either. And, and Ambassador, this is where I'm going to probably disagree with you here. I mean, this is now the second public dispute that he's had with, with General McChrystal. The idea that he summoned to the White House, the idea that Gibbs said today that firing is not off the table, he wouldn't give him a vote of confidence, tells me that this, this general is probably in trouble and may want to just bow out himself, no? Well, you know, that's possible. It, it certainly it could. It's really, I think it's really uh, his third strike. But if you read the article carefully, which I have done, it, it's, it's not about his ego. He's not disrespectful at all of the president and the, and the president's policies. The guy's been in this battle for about nine years. He, they said in nine years he's seen his wife a total of 30 days uh, in every one of those years. And that staff around him are a bunch of warriors as well. I mean, these are these yeah. are real warriors, and these guys are committed to what we're trying to do over there. But they're they're tired, they're weary, they get frustrated, and they they use bad judgment. There's no question about that. All right, but Colonel, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that you know the people around Obama uh, will recommend that he fire him, and uh, you know Obama nah, is pretty I, indecisive. Well, Jim, so I, we'll let, see. Let me just make I, an I hope I hope he doesn't fire him. Well, I hope he doesn't, too, because I agree with you about the competence and the character of this general. I, I've seen him on the battlefield. I understand what he's trying to do, and I think it's, it is indeed possible that he gets it done. The problem is Obama has to look like he's decisive for a change. This is his golden opportunity. And so he's going to make yeah. a political equation here. But, Ali, let me jump in here. the war or not, he's going to fire the guy. So, so he's not going to be tough with North Korea or Iran. He's going to, no. be, tu he's going to be tough with the general. Here, here's a question. Because this administration has had a very hard time, Ali, even acknowledging a war on terror exists. Uh, this general made very specific recommendations about the troop strength needed or we risk failure. The president didn't go along with his recommendations. What, well, should, and, what should a general do? And he dithered forever making the ultimate actually, decision, just like Obama does in almost what should, a, what Look, should a general do? Actually, if, here, here's the John, bottom line. He did, a general he has did two go choices. Along. A general has two choices. A general can either convince the commander-in-chief to change what the policies are, or he can resign. In this case, what General McChrystal's staff has allowed to happen, and what the general did, I, I agree, by the way, Jim, he's not over the top. In fact, there's very little in this column that's actually attributable directly to General McChrystal, yeah. notwithstanding yeah. The, the claim that there's you know, lengthy interviews. But General McChrystal's the folks around him allowed this to happen, and that carries something because he, they're speaking for their general. Yeah. And their general, he's, if he's that's the case, is not at all respectful for this president. All right, guys, we got to run. Uh, it's going to be fascinating to watch. And um, my prediction, I'm with Ollie, Jim. If you win, Bruce Chris take for you. But, you know, the sad part we'll is, is we've, got, <laughs> we, we, well, we, we've got troops that need a leadership. And he's been fighting, yeah. he's been fighting for the proper support they need. So on the serious side of this, in yeah. all honesty, he sh the president should have given the troops that he requested in the beginning. But appreciate you being with us.